السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى على محمد وعلى محمد أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وعلى محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين والخيرة من أصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقالت اليهود يد الله مغلولة غلت أيديهم ولعنوا بما قالوا بل يداه مبسوطتان ينفق كيف يشاء وليزيدن كثيرا منهم ما أنزل إليك من ربك طغيانا وكفرا صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد There is a debate among Muslims and also non-Muslims as to whether God, the Lord, is able to change a decision that he made earlier regarding us and our destinies. For instance, if God decides that someone has to live for a certain period of time, would he be able, would God be able in this case to change his mind and he and, and alter his, his first decision, meaning if he decided that this person should live for 70 years, can he increase or decrease this number later? A group of the people of book and also a group of Muslims today, they believe, no, God would not change his decision. The people of book, they said he has no control over what he decided before. Yet Allah maghlula, his hand is shackled, he is handcuffed. He is restrained. He cannot change. Neither he can increase nor decrease nor alter anything. He cannot change because he has no control over what he did. And if he issues a judgment, if he passes a judgment or a verdict or a decision, he would not abrogate that. Nasr. Abrogation is nasr. He would not come and cancel or revoke what he decided. So once he decides something, he himself cannot change it. Allah says this is not the case. بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَتَانِ His hand, and this is a figure of a speech, when some, someone is free, completely free in what he or she wants to do, they say his hands are outstretched his hands are outstretched 
mabsutatan. And the Holy Quran states there is a verse in Surah Al Ra'd. Surah Al Ra'd is chapter 13. Verse 39, يَمْحُلَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيُثْبِتْ Allah effaces what he يَمْحُ He revokes, effaces what he likes, what he decides to revoke, وَيُثْبِتْ Sometimes he establishes or he confirms what he decided. يَمْحُلَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيُثْبِتْ وَعِنْدَهُ Ummul Kitab. He has the mother of the book with him. The mother of the book here, what is in our own expediency, what is in our own interest. He knows best what is in our interest. Sometimes Allah decides to bestow certain amount of sustenance on certain families or individuals. But later on, he would increase that amount. Yazidu fil khalqi ma yasha. In another verse, Allah says, وَمَا يُعَمِّرُ مِنْ مُعَمِّرٍ وَلَا يَنْقُصُ مِنْ عُمُرِهِ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ وَلَا يَنْقُصُ We decided to give certain years of life to this individual. Then we decided to decrease it. <coughs> decrease this eight years into four years, into 30 years. And we decide what is best. So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He decides the first destiny and if He changes that first destiny, He will decide also the second destiny and the second fate for us. And that happens according to His will, Mashiach, according to His wisdom and also in accordance with people's life and people's deeds sometimes Allah decides certain things for us but when he experiences our own deeds and actions and behavior then he will decide to change his first decision into a second decision and many elements they contribute into this, the alteration of his decision. Many elements. Many elements. One of them, we have plenty of hadith that states that your relationship with your family, especially your parents, your relationship with your parents, with your mother, with your father, is going to play a major role in your life, especially in your lifespan. How long are you going to live? That does not mean, necessarily means that if someone dies very young, he did something bad to his mother or his father. No. But this is the common case. And every common case has some exceptions. If you want to live healthy, prosperous, happy, then do good to your parents, to your mother, to your father. Silatul Rahim. Not just your parents, but your extended family. Be courteous to them. Be generous to them. Try to help them out. Try to stand with them. Try to do good to them. Silatul Rahim. Tutilu fil umr. Increases your life, your life span. Wa qati'atul Rahim, on the other side, when someone disconnects with his family, he doesn't like to speak to his uncle because 50 years ago he said something to him. He doesn't want to see his cousin because one day he didn't serve him tea. He doesn't want to see his aunt because one day she didn't answer his salam, for instance. We have such people, alhamdulillah. We have some cuckoos, you know, <laughs> that they disconnect with all the people because... <clears throat> Not there is something wrong with the people because there is something wrong with themselves. This is very dangerous. This type of behavior is very abhorrent, very frowned upon in our religion, especially the school of Ahlul Bayt. In particular, the school of Rasulullah sallallahu and his family. Oh. <laughs> 
they always emphasize that be good with your next in kin. Be good to your family. Do not treat them the same. Even if you find them doing something bad to you, you return that bad with goodness. Because you're going to reap the benefit of your goodness. <laughs> now, this alteration of God's decision, in Islam we have some disagreement over it. In the Shia tradition, they call it Al-Bada. Al-Bada means that Allah <clears throat> decides something, and then depending on your behavior, he's going to change his decision. But he knows about both decisions, the first one and the second one. While in other schools of thought, they say, no, this is wrong. God would not change his decision. Because God knows from the day one that this is good for us or bad for us. But the school of Ahl al-Bayt says Allah's decisions, many of them, not all, many of them are conditional, not absolute, not qat'i, absolute. Some of them are absolute, such as death. Death is, he runs after us. If we can escape him here, he would come there. If we escape him there, until he will grab us. So there is no runaway from death. But there are other aspects of our life marriage family business job you know health sickness this that success failure Allah says these are conditional it depends on you on your conduct on your behavior on your manner on your akhlaq it depends on this I leave them mu'allaq mu'allaq means conditional you do this I'll do that for you and the Quran we have a plenty of examples in the Quran. One of them regarding the fate of the community, the whole community, the whole country, not just the family or the individual, the whole country. I would not change the condition of this community, whether to, to the better or to the worse, until they change their own circumstances. They change their, their manners. Ma bi anfusihim. Bi anfusihim means your manners. Your manners are good. You become sincere with God. You become dedicated, hardworking. I'll bring you success. This is in regards to the community. In regards to individuals, in ahsantum, ahsantum li anfusikum. You do good in your life with others. We do good to you. Wa in asatum, you do bad. You do bad to your own self. وَإِنْ أَسَأْتُمْ فَلَهَا In another verses, Allah says, if you find difficulties in your risk, in your sustenance, in your job, in your income, there is some difficulties. Resort to this remedy, to this solution. And the solution is istighfar. Istighfar. مَنْ ضَيِّقَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالْإِسْتِغْفَارِ If one month, one year, one season you find that you are not getting the income that you are supposed to get, business is dead, then, of course, eco economists, they tell you to do other things. Go to the marketing, do this, do that. Politicians speak about taxes, about inflation. Allah says, my opinion, if you want to take my opinion, عَلَيْكَ بِالْإِسْتِغْفَارِ Go and do istighfar. Istighfar has two aspects. One is material and the second is spiritual. The material is that control yourself. Don't cheat, don't lie in your business. This is the material aspect. The spiritual is to do istighfar. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayh. Go back to your Lord. Wastaghfiru Rabbakum. Nuh says to his community. وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارٍ Go back to your Lord, repent, go back to Him. Allah will open the 
floodgate of his mercy upon you. The rain, the vegetation, the happiness, family, children, prosperity, stability, peace, because of the istighfar. So these are the results of our deeds. So Allah will change the fate of the person, the fate of the community, the fate of the family, depending on what they do. While he knows from the beginning that yes, I decide 70 years of health and prosperity for this person, but this is conditional and I know he's going to change to the better or to the worse. If he changes to the better, I'll give him more. I'll give him some more bonus. If he does worse, I will cut off that from him. يَمْحُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيُثْبِتْ وَعِنْدَهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ And last, the story of Ayyub alayhi salam. Allah says the result of Ayyub's hard working and patience is that we brought him relief. وَأَيُّوبَ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الظُّرُّ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ ظُرْ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ عَلَيْكُمُ السلام فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ ظُرْ Because he appealed to us. أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الظُّرْ With sincerity he talked to us. He was appealing to us with sincerity from his heart that evil has touched me all aspects of my life. وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّا and, and the solution to that is you, not someone else. وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ We responded to him. فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ فَكَشَفْنَا We removed this calamity that has touched him. فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ ظُرْ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته عليا أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيدي شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهم السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إن وعد الله حق فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور صدق الله العلي العظيم <تصفيق> The most dangerous disease that strikes on Human beings in this life is a disease called Hubbur Dunya. The obsession and the excessive attachment to this life. Hubbur Dunya, Ruwi an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anna hu qal, he states, Hubbur Dunya, 
رأس كل خطيئة. It's the key for every vice, for every deviation. The fountain head, the fountain head of every sin, the attachment to this to this dunya. What does حب الدنيا mean? Does it mean that I should not like food or drink or family or children or business or money or my vehicle or my house or my vacation? No, this is not the meaning. This is not the meaning. Allah says, I want you to enjoy this life. كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَعْمَلُوا صَالِحِ Allah says, سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Enjoy this land. Enjoy the beauty of this earth. Enjoy the beauty of relationships. Enjoy your families, your children, your wealth, your health. So what does it mean then? It means that we give preference to this dunya over the akhir. It means that we become so obsessed, so attached to this life to the extent that we forget about something called akhir. We forget about something called God. We forget about something called values and principles. We become blinded. We don't see next week. We don't see next month. All what we see is dunya. We become confined in this little box, material box called dunya. This is hubbud dunya. This is what Allah say, stay away from it. Use the dunya, do not use the dunya, uses you. You use it. Use your wealth, do not you let the wealth use you. Use your family, enjoy your children. Zinatul Hayat dunya, Allah says. Enjoy them, enjoy this life, enjoy your health, enjoy your vacation. But always remember that there is a better a, a bigger goal, and this is a there is a final destination and the final destination is the akhirah use your family to earn the akhirah use your wealth and money to earn the akhirah use your business and your relations to earn the akhirah wabtaghi fi ma ataka allah wabtaghi fi ma ataka allah ad-dar al-akhirah wa la tansa nasibaka min ad-dunya you have to strike the balance always put the akhirah first and then dunya second. And there is no contradiction between them. If your final destination and final goal, always the akhirah, you can utilize this lower dunya for the akhirah. <laughs> An example of that. Let's break it down to some examples, practical examples. Let's come to food. Many people love food. But the, the difference between a believer and non-believer is that the non-believer, he or she would love the food and to the extent that he's not even ready to share his food and his meal with anyone. Even if there are people who are starving next to him. Even if there are children, little children who are hungry, he doesn't care. He has to eat his meal, his full meal, with dessert, with tea and Turkish coffee and this and that. And he would never think of those who are sitting next to him. Maybe there is a family, maybe, maybe there is an orphan, maybe there is a poor person, maybe there is a homeless. He doesn't think about that. And sometimes he's ready to fight over food. He's ready to fight with his wife, with his son, with his friend with the closest people to him over a meal, simple meal. This is obsession with dunya. And sometimes he lives to eat, not he eats to live. This is the difference. We eat to live. We don't, we don't live to eat. This is the difference, big difference. Both they eat the food. But one of them, he eats to live, to sustain himself, to be able to help. Others, he lives to eat. All what he has in this dunya is his batan, shahwatul batan. Same thing about shahwatul farj. 
about sex, about family, about wealth. Some people, they live to make money. They don't make money to live, but they live to make money. Their ultimate goal is money, not life, money. The same thing with amal, with job. Allah says, we have to work hard. We have to work hard. Amal is part of religion and part of servitude and part of ibadah. However, but there is something more important than your job. God is more important. I see some Muslims, they don't care about their prayers. Why? Because I'm working, Sayyid. So he does his Salat, Salat al-Dhuhr, he does it 15 minutes before sunset. 15 minutes before sunset. Why? Because I'm in my office, I'm working. This is not an excuse. You put God the last because you think you're going to lose your job. You're not going to lose your job. If you put Allah first, you gain your job. You sustain your job. You secure your job. You don't lose it. But he puts job before family, before his own children, before his daughter, before his son, before his wife, before his parents, before his God, before his prayers. This is obsession to dunya. Obsession with dunya. Attachment to dunya. This type of behavior is repugnant and abhorrent, unacceptable. This is hubb dunya But there is someone else who loves his job, but there are certain things in his life are more important than his job. More important. We have ahem and muhim. We have important and we have more important. So we have to put them in order. If we want to succeed, we have to put these things in order. We have to put Allah first and foremost. Nothing is more important than Allah. And His advice for us and His commands. This is Taqwa Allah. Taqwa Allah is whenever Allah says something, I put it first. I was saying to a newlywed what, couples the other day that if you want to treat your wife with happiness, with goodness, and if she wants to treat you with goodness and fairness, look at God before you look at your wife. And she has to look at God before she looks at her husband. We see God. Is God happy with what I'm doing? Before my wife says yes or no, I look at God. If God says yes, I go ahead with it. If God says no, even if my wife says yes, I say no. God is saying no. This is injustice. I should not do that. Putting Allah above everything else. When we put him and fix the relationship with him, you all remember this hadith. Man aslaha, you all remember it. Man aslaha fi ma baynahu wa bayna Allah, aslaha Allah fi ma baynahu wa bayna nas. The problem with us is that we don't fix the relationship with God. We don't. This is, this is why our relationships with others are broken too. Because the main pipe is broken. The main one is broken. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to endow, inshallah, wisdom on us and faith. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ If we seek the akhirah, akhirah, not just by mere wishes and dreams, by work, by production, وَسَعَى لَهَا we have to do sa'i, we have to work hard, we have to struggle to earn the akhir, inshallah ta'ala. My friends, uh, IECOC have organized a ziyarah trip this year, 2016, beginning of April, from April 3rd until April 17th to uh, Iraq and Iran, to Najaf, Karbala, Kazimain, Samarra, and then Iran, inshallah, to Mashhad al-Imam al-Rida, alayhi salatu was salam, and the city of Qom, from the 13th until 17th. So if you are interested on this spiritual trip, so you can contact the administration here, inshallah, and put your name. Allahumma khfir al-mu'mineen wa al-mu'minat. والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات I promised some of my close friends and relatives that I would mention them in the dua tonight inshallah so let's raise our hands and pray for them many of them are in the hospital in a very critical conditions 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 يا الله من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية المرضى المنظورين اللهم ألبسهم ثوب الصحة والعافية وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد